go. We're back, man to man. Part two with these questions from all uh, the social medias, the Twitter, the Instagrams. Loving these questions. Uh, some good ones. We're going to be doing this every week. So uh, keep them coming. Uh, my first one is actually um, from one of my boys, one of your uh, former teammates. Twan. Who was that? D Reed. D Reed. D Reed. Yeah, him in the DMs, man. He said, uh, what's good, bro? Hey, there's a DB that's almost become a forgotten name, but he's one of the best in his era. What made Asante Samuel so great, and how come he doesn't get the proper respect he deserves? Mm. Um, and I know you, sure, you probably had some classic games um, against Asante. You know, obviously not playing against him, but seeing them firsthand. Yeah. I'll let you uh, jump to that question first. Man, um, and I, you, you can't say it was a scheme because I would say when he was playing um, in New England because there's been people that's – been corners that played in that scheme and hasn't done the things that he's done. Yeah. But his instincts, um, the way he was able to get his hands on the ball, uh, game changer, playmaker, um, was something special. It was something yeah. special. You know, I, you would say before him, you know, you had Ty Law. Yeah. Um, Ty Law was doing those things. Then Asante came through and was doing the same things where get off about – 10 yards you didn't know if they were in cover two cover mm -hmm. four what type of covers they were playing and at like like clockwork you know plant break boom pick yeah. six you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um and it, it continued he went to philly went to philly um did the same exact things always would get his hands on the ball i would i would yep. say i think he has like 40 picks oh we got 50 50 51, maybe 50. 50, oh, my 51 fault, my in 11 fault. years my fault, bro. Yeah. I, um, I shorted you eleven. My fault. Right. Um, but I don't know why his name doesn't get uh, get get talked about as one of the top um, DBs in our era because um, he he definitely was a playmaker. Um, definitely changed the game. Yeah, like like you said, man. I'm gonna piggyback on a lot of what you said. Uh, his instincts were second to none, and I was actually one of those players. I got drafted in '09. I think his last year with uh, New England was probably '07. But uh, I was one of those players. Well, he was one of those players, number one, that I looked up to growing up. Him being from down here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, you know, just looked up to how he uh, came into the Patriots and started making big, big, huge plays on big stages. Yeah. Um, and just watching his game. I, I had similar build, you know, slim, slimmer build, not a big guy who's going to get up in your face and beat you up, but more so beat you, you know, with my mind and footwork. And that's why I tried to model my game after. When they drafted me, they, they wanted me to do a lot of the things that he was doing. But I couldn't do it like him. You know what I mean? He, he was yeah, different, man. So it's definitely instincts, different. like you said, his smarts, just um being uh knowing where the ball is gonna go. And like uh we talked earlier with Weddle, um, that's one of the things that, that can help you play fast is just knowing uh ahead of time what's coming. And he did he he did that probably the best I've seen at the cornerback position. He had a five year stretch, uh, I believe, from like oh nine or uh oh six actually, where he had like 35 picks or 30 something crazy. Picks in like six years five six it's crazy years, so, um, five years matter of fact that, that's that's hard to do that's, that's hard to do that's, that's hard to do in a career yeah yeah so for him to do that so man we gotta get you on the show man we gotta get you exactly. on the pod bro we gotta get you on the pod but definitely um salute uh much love much respect to asante man what he yeah, definitely um, hall of famer for sure oh for sure no question no question sure. no question sure we gotta um we got another one. Um, Berto asks, uh, what coach had the biggest impact on you and do you still stay in contact? Oh, sure. I guess I answer that one first. Um, I would say my high school coaches, honestly, um, just because I feel like that's a, that's a critical point in, in your life as, a, as an athlete, as a young man. Um, you know, just keep because in high school, you know, as a player that's going to go to college and play ball or whatever, you know, you usually, you know, usually big shit in your high school or something. Yeah. So it, it's it's hard for a 16, 17, 18 year old to stay grounded, you know, and they're kind of walking around school at a big man on campus. So my high school to coaches did a great job of just keeping everything um, in perspective, uh, always teaching me the game on and off the field. My my coach, Otis Mounds, was um, he went on to play at Auburn. So he had a D1 background. He had a, a short career in the NFL. So he had some experience there that helped me out. Uh, Mike Higgins, uh, Calvin Johnson. So I would say uh, Calvin Jackson, another former NFL pro um, with the Dolphins. So um, I would say my high school coach. All my coaches had a great impact on me, but my high school coaches, I would say. 
Yeah, I'll piggyback um, on that as well. I would say um, I would say three coaches for me. Um, two of them were my high school coaches. Uh, A.C. Kyle Thorne, he was my head coach at Denby. And then Tracy Arad, he was my defensive co- coordinator, linebackers coach um, as well in high school, man. So definitely those two and just really – you know what I mean? Just what you just said, just at, at that point of your career, at that point of your life is more than uh, football. It's about, you know, they see you in the locker, in the, in the hallways in yeah. school, um, trying to point you in the right direction to be a young, um, <clears throat> a young black man uh, yeah. and, and, and successful. And then once I got to Howard University, I would say my DB coach, Ron Bolton, Ron Bolton, he uh, he played at Norfolk State, HBCU grad as well. Um, he ended up going to the league as well and playing 13 years. So he was really the one that really got me in my my DB mode. You know, in high school, yeah. I played linebacker. So um, going to Howard, man, he really um, – he was the first one to really be like, look, uh, they called me Deuce. Deuce, you can really – Oh, you rock uh, that two in high school yeah, too? Yeah. No, nah, I, I rock four in high school. I rock, oh, I, I rock that two in, um, in college. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So um much love to them, man. And and obviously, as we always know, man, coaches have big impacts in our lives. Um a, a lot of times shoot, we see we see our coaches um and talk to our coaches sometimes more than our parents, man. So having that 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 figure away from home to really steer you in the right direction is important. Facts. Big, big facts. Yeah. Who the next one we got? Um, let's see. Let's go E train. E underscore train 32 asks, how did the preparation during the offseason differ from early to later in your career? Mm, that's a uh, that's a good one. I would say I, um, I'll answer this one, man. I would say for me, um, early in my career, um, it was more so lift and run, lift and run and backpedal. Whereas later in my career, I was able to do things in my um, offseason preparation to really transfer over to what I was going to do on the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also later in my career, it wasn't so much as get big, get big, get big. It was more so get flexible, um, more yeah. yoga, um, and just really just taking care of those little nicks and knacks, um, you know, uh, in the in, in the off season where it, whether it was uh, acupuncture, where there was needling. Yeah. I really got bigger than that later in my career as well. So, did you still had the cupping. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I got big on the got big into into the cup, and I would get that probably once or twice a week, just depending on on what it was, man. So you know, as you get older, man, you know your body don't really recover like it like it used to when you was you know first five years in the league. So I really started um, experimenting, experimenting different things, and and for me, I found like my body reacted the best to um, to the yoga. Um, that was real big for me. The cupping mm-hmm. was real, good, real big for me, and um, and needling was good for me as well. Yeah. So I mean, I piggyback on what you said. Uh, it's just as as you get older, you just um, almost obviously you you understand your body more, and you kind of get in more of a regimen that work that works for you, and that adapts over time. You know, year, you know, probably one through five. Um, you know, I was spent also you know spending more time out. You know, being out late, partying, mm-hmm. traveling more um spending more money and then later in the career later in my career you know i was you know spending more time with the family you know traveling but going on different type of vacations and stuff and you know also just uh taking care of your body like sleeping get more sleep yeah. getting more stretch and like you said the uh acupuncture was big for me uh art stuff mat stuff like that so on um, that's mm-hmm. different and, and just knowing hey i want to go into this year and i want to be better at this specific thing as opposed to I just want to be bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah. You have more specific, um, you know, goals that you want to go and accomplish that year. So uh, that would be the biggest difference uh, from early to to, to late. Mm-hmm. One more um, from Jacob underscore Peterlin. Hope I said that right. Um, asks, how do I watch film to know where the ball is going before it snap? You want that? You, let me jump in. Sure, you, you can get it. Um, For me, uh. It, it, it's certain things uh, you watch on film and, and you know, football, it's a, it's a complicated game, but it's it's simple at the same time. Um, it's only so many plays and routes and things you can run. Um, offenses have, you know, limited time to practice just like we do. So you can only change up so much. So for me, um, I would try to figure out what they're not going to do. First of all, um, depending on personnel, Hey, this guy doesn't do this or um, field position. 
down the distance. Okay, and then you factor in the tendencies, and now it's splits. You know, you're taking in all that information, you see it over and over on film, whether it's cut ups or games, and then you come into the snap. And it's like I don't I don't like to guess a lot, like they're definitely gonna do this, but I like to say, okay, they're not doing this, this, and that. So let me prepare for this, this, and that. And you can anticipate things and play and figure it out. And that, that's how you um, you know, play faster. You gotta, you gotta on the on that on the pro level. You got to be able to anticipate plays. Um, you got to be able to anticipate formation, know what's coming. And um, that's 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 the only way, in my opinion, you consistently make plays at the uh, pro level. Nah, that's it right there, bro. You, um, I can't say it any better. Um, like you said, like it's um, for one, I think it comes with experience, seeing different things. But like you yep. said, when you watching that film, um, who's in the game? Um, where is your star player aligned? Where is this person aligned? That's going to tell you a lot. Like you said, splits. Yep. Um, things of that nature and then like you said like a game the game of football is all about instincts like you can't mm-hmm. take that away so um you got to believe what you see yeah um and and like i said I, everything else that you said was was spot on um you know no guessing uh yeah. you got you got to like once again believe what you see go make a play um but you know all that work comes throughout the week film study um going and practice and doing what you do yeah and, and yeah you, so you, that's that's i mean that's the best we can give you that and and like what said though earlier like he was one of those guys who picked up defenses quick right mm-hmm. so if you're a player and you you got to know yourself right so you got to know if you're a player that got to spend more time understanding what you're doing because the more you got to grasp on what you and your defense is doing and trying to accomplish and the weaknesses, less. like what said that's the more attention you can pay to the offense you know, exactly. say, okay, how am I getting attacked? How are they going to attack this? But you got to secure that first thing first. You can't not really be sure about what you're doing before you're going to watch film and trying to, you know, get, get a step ahead on what the offense is doing. And then I also want to highlight something that uh, Iwato said was as far as, um, and what you just said as far as like, you have to know what you're doing. So mm-hmm. if you know what you're doing, you can spend more time on the opposing offense as far as like what they do. And you can have that mindset as an officer coordinator what's the weakness of their defense? And yep. if you can understand that, if you understand the weaknesses, well, even the strength, even the strengths mm-hmm. and weaknesses of the defense, that takes you a long way. And one thing for me that I love about the good coordinators is that they understand that there's a weakness to every defense. Yep. So we're not out here trying to cover everything. You know, it's a weakness of the defense. Hopefully, you know, with our disguise, we can kind of hide that. Yep. And if they do find that, hey, look, you know, we got to rally to the ball. We make a play. We live to see another down. So Never see another um, down. Yeah, so that's something that I really liked about what E. Weddle said, what he spoke on, wanted to highlight that as well. Yep, for sure. We got one more. Uh, Nick Gomez, 147. I think it's from Twitter. Uh, would you rather have mm. the Legion of Boom or the, or the Broncos no fly zone? Oh, mm, that is tough. That is tough. That's tough. That's I'm a, tough. I'm gonna go. Damn. I'm gonna go. Um. I'm gonna go Denver. I'm gonna go That's, Denver. And it's tough, tough to go Denver because it's tough to go either way. But I'm gonna go Denver just because I was a man to man guy for the majority of my career. And it, I, I personally feel like that's tough. That's the tougher job, you know. And when they had uh, Chris Harris, Roby, uh, Key to lead, and then them pass rushers, which is key. That's key. You got them pass rushers off the edge. I'm taking that defense. That whole okay. defense. Man to man is it's tough to play, right? Absolutely. But like you said, you got that pass rush. The ball's gonna get out quick. Mm-hmm. That helps. But, you, but what also is tough is knowing that I'm gonna be in cover three. Uh huh. <laughs> And you yep. can't beat me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's tough. That is tough. I'm in a high school. I'm I'm in a I'm in a vanilla defense. You we know got, what I'm you know what I'm gonna be in. here. We got a little this and that. I mean, that's what they, they put that bug when they put Cam in that buzz and that drop, buzz. Drop Thomas mm-hmm. in that buzz. That was ugly. It was it was it was, but you knew what they were gonna be in. That's a fact. You, you, you knew you knew if it was an over route, either him or the other that other linebacker was gonna catch that over route. Yep. Uh, Earl's gonna lean away. Like you knew Sherm was gonna be on the, the offense right. Offensive right. He's gonna play that deep third. Playing that third, yeah. So that's, that's tough. tough. 
That's, that's tough. tough. It's, it's, that's it's tough. tough. They're both, both good, great defenses, man. That all all-time secondaries, great, yeah. all-time great secondaries, man. You went Denver. I just go Legion of Boom just cause. You know what I mean? Can't but go wrong with you. Either. Can't go wrong. Yeah. 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 Hey, man. Appreciate y'all, though, man. Y'all keep bringing in them questions, man. Definitely some great questions, man. That's our second episode of a uh, man-to-man Q and A. So, yes, sir. Tell somebody, whoever you know, tell them. Check us out, man. Been loving the support, loving the feedback. Uh, we enjoying it, man. So, uh, thank you for listening. Now, nah, for sure, man. We out. We out.